السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله سيدي how could love and trust be built if 90% of people have intention to cause harm as mentioned in the discussion yesterday yeah i don't know your sound is low so i can't hear testing can you hear yeah, me yeah closer to the mic maybe so i can hear Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum salam <laughs> How could love and trust be built if 90% of the people have intention to cause harm as mentioned in yesterday's discussion? Inshallah, love and trust in Allah's job means that these are the days in which to build our faith, Ya Ayyuhalladhin Amanu, Amanu. That for anyone who thinks, oh they believe, Alhamdulillah for you but keep believing. That we must go much deeper in our belief and keep pushing for a deeper belief, a deeper reliance upon Allah and upon our faith. So trust in only Allah and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and those who represent that love and represent and reflect that love by its actions, not by word. It means the one who continuously teaching about that love and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is what's important. So if you go back to these teachings you'll see that people talk about the last days, talk about the signs of last days, talk about juja majujas hidden in this cave, this is this, this is this, this is this. And it's reality that only Allah come and teaches, all of that is… What's the importance of all of that if you don't teach the key? If you don't teach people the key is Muhammadun Rasulullah because that's the, that's the key that shaitan is going to try to take away. Knowing the alamat, knowing Qur'an by thinking they read it, they send the children to become hafiz, all of this fantastic if, if they understood the key is Muhammadun Rasulullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For if that key should be taken from you, you're empty. Your faith will be dropped, your faith will be lost and the person will come under attack. So this is the, the key of the last days. So we see how that madhab that refle reflects the Dajjal's teachings and that's the danger is to talk much about Allah much about Holy Qur'an less about Sayyidina Muhammad and less about the hadith and Prophet described in last days, they won't even mention me on the member. And people who talk often about Allah but make no mention of Sayyidina Muhammad How, how you, you can pretend to know Allah when you don't know even your name and yourself and that you don't talk about the Rasul So that becomes the key and those whom not talking about Prophet they're not a solution but they're more part of the problem. 
And problems in the last days are so subtle that shaitan is going to fool people with good deeds. Outright bad is outright bad. So that's not what's going to fool believers and pull you know the card or the, the string out of the believer. The, the, the bad is outright bad, that's for a different category of people. But shaitan has to deal with these people and take away faith in such a subtle way in which they don't know their faith is being taken away. And that has to do with the key. So when you keep your eye on the key, keep your eye on the target, the target, the reality is Muhammadun Rasulullah And that's why the sunnah is so important, the way, the ish, the love, the teachings, all of that is keeping us to what Allah described, hold tight, hold tight to hablillah, habl and hub, same letters. That the Arabic for a rope has same letters as Arabic for hub and love because you've got to hold on to that rope with love, not with your aql. Your mind shaitan going to come and fool, oh and give you very clever talks on why your mind is thinking the wrong thing. But love it bonds in such an immense depth. So it means the heart that has a love for Prophet they adhere to it because of love. They do what they do because of love, they, they, they hold fast and, and struggle with their practices, their faith and, and trying to outdo other people in their practices for the love and the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad because competition is good in religion. If you don't feel that you're competing, you're doing something wrong. If you feel that it doesn't matter, who cares, you're doing something wrong because you have to feel competitive, you have to feel that you want the attention of Sayyidina Muhammad so you want to do more. But now people have bizarre thought that they look left and right say, they're not doing it, why should I do it? Well because when Allah wants to come and, and put a difficulty on their grave, He's not going to be asking you and He's not bearing you together. Everyone has their own grave. If you want your grave to be shiny, you want your grave to be filled with light, you want your life to be filled with barakah, you want the nazar and the attention of Prophet well get up and rise up. Once you rise up and stand you don't care about left and right, you don't care if everyone's sleeping, you have something to do and you have to do it. And you only can do that by love, means that you have that immense love to make Prophet happy with you and that you want to exceed beyond others. If others are bringing five people, I'm going to bring 5,000 people. If other people are feeding 10 people, I want to feed 10,000 people. You have to feel a competition. That's the state in which we're yearning for to achieve. So our trust is only in Allah His beloved Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result those who represent that love. If they cease to represent that love then at least our heart is connected to Sayyidina Muhammad That's the importance. As soon as we talk about love a lot of people begin to talk about emotions, right? So female are emotional, men are physical. The state of love that we talk about is not emotional. Where you say, oh shaykh is talking so much about love so I have to be kind to everyone, good to everyone, just not and trusting to everyone. No, 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 no this is a, these are the last days in which Prophet described the one sitting, means he's hiding, is better than the one standing, don't go out. Sit where you are, do your ibadah and you go for your work and come back. Means these are the difficulties that open, as soon as they open a door they open confusion. So they stay 
within their cave, they do their practices, they go out to work, they come back and secure their faith. They live their life with khidmat and to be busy in the service of Allah not the service of themselves. These are the medicine for every day there's a sickness and Allah provides its medicine. These teachings are the medicine for these days, <coughs> not for a thousand years ago but for today. The system of Dajjal coming upon this earth, his zuhoor in which he wants to pronounce himself, they said coming 2023, if that figure is who they say he is, he must profess himself. Immediately he professes himself who he is, then there's certain actions he must take. That's their faith, it's not our faith, we have, we're, not, we're not saying we're that person. So when that individual claims who he is, immediately things begin to happen. As a result of seeing that then we've, we put our faith and trust in Allah as being dispensed and, and sent out to us by the guidance of our shiukh and this, this immensely powerful Nashbandi connection that guides us through the storm of everything they are planning on doing, everything that they have done and everything that they will do. And whatever they say they will do, they don't put into account Allah because they don't believe, they're, they're dajjal shaitan. Shaitan had plans that we're going to inoculate this, we're going to do this, we're going to do all that. Uh, yes they, they, that was their intention and within their plan Allah plans best, He wrote the program. And they weren't able to achieve that. So people whom are worried, put your faith and trust in Allah Whatever they're planning Allah has provided its escape, its safety and its cave. If Allah writes a shower of fire to come upon the earth, He also wrote within the program a cave of safety. That's why then the tawakkul and the love and the reliance is upon Allah And that true reliance can only be found in the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad That is the key. That is the secret of A'uzu Billah that if you want to seek refuge in Allah from shaitan that was the beginning of every journey. Before you try to understand who is Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem then you had to be already in the presence of A'uzu Billahi min shaitanir rajeem. Who, who is the reality of A'uzu Billah when Allah says, seek refuge in me from shaitan, not you go out and fight shaitan. But seek refuge in me, where is that refuge? That's in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Those with their love and their sunnah and every good character they're trying to keep to the best of their ability with the overwhelming dirtiness of this dunya. As a result of that they're brought near to the presence of Prophet and as a result then they are fulfilling what Allah asked that, seek refuge in me. Means that when you seek refuge in the presence of Prophet you are seeking refuge in me and I am the protector of Sayyidina Muhammad So when you're in that proximity and in that nearness you're under the umbrella of protection. And even if the world is destined for a fire and a storm of fire from the skies, Allah has written within the program, there's a cave of safety, enter within it. They tried to do many things, it didn't work. They tried to collapse many things, it didn't work. So they'll continue to do what they think they want to do. but. Always within this program there's already a code and a secret that has been put within it.
its key is Muhammadun Rasulullah <coughs> If you lose that key, that cave won't be visible to you and that safety won't be visible to you. As when they came to come against Sayyidina Muhammad they went directly to the cave, they looked into the cave and then appeared a spider web and two birds guarding that reality. They looked but they did not see because Allah described, they have eyes but they don't see. When Allah doesn't want somebody to see, they don't see. They have ears and they don't hear. You talk all you want and they're not going to hear us. So means Allah is the one whom is in complete control. Safety is the immense level of faith. That's why the one whom has doubt, better for them to go. Go, go where you think you're going to be safe and the testing become more difficult, more difficult. And that's why they gave the example Mawlana Sharaf al-Deen when they were coming to destroy the region. <coughs> they said, oh, Mawlana people are coming, what should we do? He said, plant your seeds, don't pay attention. And people got angry and they said two-thirds of them ran. So he doesn't know what he's talking about. They, we told them the armies are approaching to slaughter us. He said, go plant your seeds. And how many times we've given this example? Because they don't want people who are, are, are going to be panicking and through their brain yelling and screaming. So they ran. After they ran, the one whom stayed, they had immense faith. And as a result, he gave them something to recite from Surat al Yaseen that a, bar be a barrier to be put in front of them, behind them, drink from this water and let's walk. And for groups of people, there are groups of shaykhs, not one shaykh. One shaykh may think he's the one shaykh for everything but there's all this humanity that has to come to guidance. So each whom Allah give within their hearts a, a bonding, they feel attuned and their heart resonates means they've already been partition to that shaykh on the day of promises. The souls resonate like armies and battalions. You can only be with whom you've been destined to be. As much as you try to be in another group, your heart doesn't resonate and you find yourself out and drifting. Means those whom have an ounce and a familiarity, Prophet described, they're like battalions in the world of light. Means that you have eternally been with that shaykh under that tarbiyah, under that guidance so that your heart on this dunya resonates with them, resonates with him. Adhere to the teaching, follow that way. And that guidance and that protection and those realities come out. So this is uh, the reality of love because as soon as you say love <clears throat> people part, start in interpreting everything they want through their head. This is very specific, this is the love of faith, this is the love of pleasing Allah so that to be protected. You know in dunya everybody wants so much to have the right insurance. You, you have a car, you want to make sure you have insurance. You don't try to cheat your insurance unless you want to shoot yourself in the foot, right? If you cheat your insurance and the day you get an accident what happens? Oh yeah that insurance you bought from that island that nobody knows, they don't cover anything. So you don't cheat yourself when you're getting insurance because you need it on a day of difficulty. So the same with the shaykh and with the tariqah, you don't cheat anybody but yourself on a day of difficulty, you didn't adhere to it then what do you think you're going to benefit from it, you know?
So this is a… this dunya is continuously teaching us about akhirah. That the things you do in dunya and the things that you take serious in your material world will multiply that by a thousand for your spiritual. And that's the importance and that's why it, the spiritual path is very unique to the individual. They know if their policy is in effect, they know what they've put their heart and soul into it. They know that they've put what they can to participate and to do to stay under protection. And they can see the signs, these are not even uh, esoteric teachings anymore. Esoteric were like when you didn't see anything wrong and you were told to believe days of difficulty are coming. Well right now they're telling you on every social media contact they're going to wipe out all bank accounts around the world. If you thought the, the problem of a pandemic was something, imagine what's coming upon this earth. You know if you thought the cold and the flu was a problem and people were going and and taking every type of thing because they were losing their mind and they wanted to take two, three, four, five different uh, things. So it means difficulties are coming upon this earth and it requires faith, it requires faith. And to be under the umbrella and the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad and doing their awrad and wazifas because Allah by guidance of Holy Qur'an says, I cannot punish them, I will not punish them. While they're making istighfar and you are amongst them. And this becomes our najat and our salvation that only Allah, they're getting this from Prophet to train people, keep yourself in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad do your istighfar, do your awrads and your zikrs so that Allah keeps us under the shade and, and the umbrella of safety inshaAllah through very difficult times inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can oneself leave the station of love to the station of presence? What's that? Can they leave from the station of love to the station of presence? From the muhabbat the shaykh to the hudur, what was the question? Yes, Sayyidi, can oneself leave the station of love to the station of presence toward to walk towards my reality? You that's you have to get the meditation book. So the meditation book is teaching us these are three states that you have to have a love for this way for the teaching. If you don't love the shaykh, you're not going to listen to that teaching. This is not going to only make logical sense, so it means you have to have an affinity and a tune. That's what we just talked to before the question is that your heart attunes to them. You say, I, I understand what he's talking about, I respect for this person. You begin to develop a love and admiration for that person and as a result you begin to meditate. So once you have the muhabbat, the hudur is the tafakkur. So the one whom is not meditating, not contemplating is not entering into the presence. And then they think that, I want to get a ticket and go and spend three weeks there. That's not the state of the presence. The presence is that wherever you are, you meditate and contemplate that the shaykh is right in front of you and you're making your connection. And that you have to feel that connection and that you, your faith is like a mountain in which you fully believe within your heart you have that state. You feel that state, you feel the energy of that state and that your communication is in that world of light, that I feel the presence of the shaykh and I'm continuously talking to him, asking, send light into my heart, send this light into my heart. Not physical matters, not the dunya things, I want this, I want that, that's only from your nafs and ego. That communication line is not for dunya, that communication line is only for spirituality. Once you use it for dunya, 
it's actually nafsani and that's then now illusional with this, not the presence of the shaykh but it's the presence of your nafs. That connection is for spirituality in which you connect and that Sayyidi, inspire within my heart to do more, to do more service, send your light into my heart, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And as a result fill my heart with energy and light, as soon as they meditate they feel energy, they feel their heart is collapsing, they feel every type of you know power and qudra coming through that. That's the only connection is necessary, that's the hudur. If they can achieve that and keep that hudur throughout the day, what happens? They're becoming and they're entering in the ocean of fana in which they see less and less of themselves and they begin to vanish. And as a result of them vanishing what, what is remaining is the presence of the shaykh. So that to leave yourself and let them to enter. <clears throat> when they can keep that then they can enter into the presence of the shaykh, they be dressed from the presence of the shaykh and they begin to represent the shaykh. And they represent that reality, they represent the ears because that hadith al-Qudsi in which Allah is describing, I become the hearing in which you hear, the seeing in which you see, that's an inheritable trait from Atiullah, Atiya Rasul ulul amri minkum. So means first you have to achieve it with ulul amr before you can achieve with Allah So then with your voluntary madad and connection you become the hearing that the shaykh is, is giving to you. You're using his gift to hear, you use his gift to see, you use his gift to begin to speak from his oceans of wisdom. So that's the dress of the shaykh upon the person. So when you're dressed by the shaykh it comes with all of its realities, right? The dress of the shaykh is coming with this, with a gift of hearing because not his physical ears it's his spiritual ears. So when the spiritual light of the shaykh is dressing what happens? You're now hearing from his hearing and that's in degrees of how pure the person is, is training. You'll begin to see from their seeing and you begin to speak and breathe from that energy. When you realize that then your adherence and bond with the shaykh is very strong because if you do anything to break it you won't hear anything and you won't feel anything and you feel like you're in a closet. That's to remind people it's not from you because the system can't work like that. It would be like Pharaoh, imagine that, that Allah would uh, train people by the shaykh and then give them some spiritual healing, then the guy gives you a, a screaming and a shout, a curse word to you and left. And now he's walking around with spiritual he 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 hearing and doing all sorts of mischief on the earth. So it's not anything like that, Allah is, understands this creation is, is very corrupt. So it's a dress that as soon as you keep the madad the dress of the shaykh comes on to you. If you keep yourself to be clean then you'll hear from his hearing, not from your hearing, you have no hearing. Because remember you said that you were nothing on this way. If you acknowledge that you were nothing, nothing can't have anything. So in your nothingness the dress comes, it becomes the hearing dress of the soul of the shaykh, the seeing dress from the soul of the shaykh, the, the feel from the soul of the shaykh. When the servant is able to keep that with good manners, good practices, keeping the trust in what's been, been dressing upon him or her with their good characters and ad adherence to the holy sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and the sharia of Allah what happens now? Because the shaykh is in the presence of Prophet when the tarbiyah of the student is correct what happens now with the dress of the shaykh, he's in the dress of the shaykh. So now he's given an audience in where the shaykh is also present which is what? Now muhabbat rasul wa khudur rasul wa fana rasul because you're in the dress of the shaykh 
the shaykh is in the presence of Prophet then that dress of the shaykh now sits in the presence with the shaykh in the presence of Prophet When they keep their adherence in the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad means now Prophet begin to give from his holy dress upon their hearing and they begin to hear with Prophet they begin to see with Prophet So then they have a Muhammadiyoon dress. Well where is Prophet sitting? In the presence of Allah So with their Muhammadan dress that they become Muhammadiyoon they are now sitting in the presence of Allah And they now understood that hadith from its reality that Allah gives them a hearing, Allah gives them a seeing in which they hear what Allah wants them to hear, they see what Allah wants them to see, they breathe what Allah wants them to breathe, they, their hands have a qudra and a power from what Allah wants them to have power because these are their dresses. But for someone thinking that they're going to just sit meditate and now have Allah's dress, no because it's Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. You had to obey Allah, you have to obey Prophet and you have to obey the ulul am. It's like a rope to you, you don't go to the top but you have to climb. So the rope's closest end to you is the ulul am, is the shaykh. So that's why then when I say I'm nothing, I'm nothing, if you plan on walking away or doing anything bad all vision will be cut, all hearing will be cut, all feeling will be cut and if you were relying upon it you feel like you're better off dead than walking this earth without that connection. Because the connection is so powerful and and it is a their source of life for them. And that's why we said the person whom has no connection they have no understanding of what taqwa is. Somebody behind seven feet of steel what he knows about taqwa? They have no fear of Allah they have no understanding of Allah The one whom has fear and it's not a fear of punishment anymore it's the fear of immense love that Allah dressing them and they don't want to lose that dress, they keep themselves clean. They keep their eyes clean, they keep their mannerism clean, they don't abuse the power they have, the energy they have, otherwise immediately that dress will be taken off. And that's the way they safeguard this reality, nobody ever runs away with it. So anybody who has it, they have it because they're sanctified and certified. There's no way to run away with it because it's a dress from the shaykh. As long as he keeps that dress upon that person, they are the dress of the shaykh and they represent the shaykh with his hearing and with his seeing, with his speaking, with his breath, with his hands and with his feet and they are muqaddam of the shaykh. Depending upon which shaykh, so people can't guess who the shaykh is. But the reality is, is the dress of that reality. And that that shaykh then is placed in always in the presence of Prophet So we get our understanding of the importance of that dress and why, why the muraqabah is that door. And that's the people of tafakkur, that's the people of Ashab al kaf The whole theme from Muharram this year has been pretty intense and very detailed because of the events that are coming. So this cave is, is becoming very clear, very defined and people should be moving quickly into it, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Related to the talk on the circumference and the radius, does it mean that the radius journey to the point is fana after fana? Please forgive this student. <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a 
that's like philosophy stuff that you'll, you'll know what fana is when you entered into fana. But the main understanding is that if you live your life on the circumference you'll know nothing and your life will be all circumstantial, all dunya oriented. As soon as you take your tariqah, you listen, you get your books, you take your notes, you start to do your zikr, you're a student. Now you can be in tariqah and say, I've been sitting there 20 years, I come, I go and I eat, I have dinner with them and I leave. That's not tariqah, that's somebody of uh, muhibbeen that they, they loved it, they enjoyed it, they had dinner and they went home. That's a something different dress. <laughs> but the ones and the students of the way is the one whom came to reach their reality, that they came to serve, they came to, to draw near to Prophet And they live it as their life, that, that it's everything to them. They want to learn, they want to, to, to reach to a reality and they want the proximity to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So these are the… this is the, the difference. As a result every step they're taking on their tariqah, well those are the steps. So what the step equals? What? Learning. If you didn't learn anything after 15 years you know, like sit you down and ask you a couple questions and you don't know what I'm talking about. But then that was just the barakah for you, you ate good food and inshaAllah Allah dress you from the blessings of the zikr. That didn't mean you were stepping. The one whom stepping means he took a qadam, he took his path. He was, he's asking his feet to inherit from his shaykh's feet to exemplify the way of the shaykh so that his feet can take the path of Sayyidina Muhammad So there's one whom stepped and then stopped. But the one whom continuously stepping means they're learning, they're learning, they're learning, they're taking now steps towards their marifah. They're learning the reality, they learn the path. They go out and they're of service to the path, so they're continuously stepping. So as they step with this love and with this ishq, if they're meditating and doing their tafakkur, they're entering in infinite states of fana. So that's why we describe the fana already. The fana is a state in which you empty yourself of yourself. That way the shaykh can begin to dress you from the reality. And then Allah open for the servant their hal and khash. These are two states for the seeker, hal and khash, not dreams because somebody who is standing on the circumference has dreams. Every grandmother has dreams, everyone on the circumference has dreams, that's not this way. The one whom stepping, struggling, fighting with themselves, Allah opens for them hal. So what's their hal? Hal means a state in which they're breathing, meditating in the zikr, it can come at any time Allah wants to send it. Immediately they're, they're overtaken by an energy, by a feeling, by crying that the subtlety of the breeze that hits them can make them laugh, cry, enter into an ecstasy because of the softness and subtlety within their heart. As they're moving closer into that fire, the fire begins to dress them, the Divinely fire, Divinely grace. Immediately they can enter into hal, the one whom become sahib al-hal, the one whom owns that state is very near to the proximity in which continuously the flame of Divine Ish comes into them and overwhelms them. So the 
farther you are from that flame, the less effect it has onto you, right? So that's what we described, the circumference person dreams a lot. Because on the circumference they're really not coming too much into the depth of the inside. As they start to move you're getting closer to the flame and the flame is now controlling you, burning within you, guiding you, sending its flares. Have you seen the sun? Has flares. So imagine the center is the most powerful sun of all suns ever created and we're just an outside planet asking to lose our form and to become a star. And as you start stepping in, if you crush and lose your form, the light of you will become more prominent than the mass of you. And now you're becoming like a star on the radius, no longer just the form on the circumference. So you're now a star that's progressing. If you're a light and a little sun, because only are like suns, the more that you're moving to the center, what happens? The greater sun is sending you all sorts of flares which are immense energies, tajalis, all these emanations. You can visualize it now with my examples. So Najmat Thaqib Allah gave examples of stars in Holy Qur'an, the piercing star. So Najma Thaqib is in the center. Then when you read about Najma Thaqib, Allah describing it's a piercing star. Means the fire and the power that comes from that when it shoots out to these students who are losing their mass and becoming more like stars, what happens? They get hit and overwhelmed by the heat, the tajalli. And they're overtaken by the hal that Allah is dressing them by. That's why I said they, they live by that. They, all their adherence is not from people, oh, you're like this, you're like this, they don't care for what people think of them. But for that center flame to reach them they have to keep their good character. They have to keep their eyes clean, they have to keep their heart clean, they have to li live a life of, of service and, and service in a grand way in which to continuously achieve the nazar of that center and that star that send your flares onto me so that it's continuously shooting out. So that Najma Thaqib is continuously shooting out to them dressing them, dressing them, dressing them. This is the state of hal and uh, emanation that the servant is reaching and khash is that when they're moving towards that Allah is giving them glimpses within their heart, visions and sights and, and knowledges and realities when they speak they see that talk. And this is from Allah's favours and, and rahmah and mercy. So it's, it's the whole way is based on the muhabbat, the fana, <coughs> the, the hudur, keeping the hudur first. So you can't reach fana without the hudur. That's why then if they don't enter into tafakkur it's like they took one step because they came to the tariqah and they stopped. And then with the advent of all these social media is, come to us, come to us, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Now they're not even stepping anymore into the center, they're going sideways like they're dancing now. They're bouncing from different YouTubes to, to different people and you're not being distracted because you're not drawing near. No, I listen to this YouTube, it says, don't do the meditation. No, you listen to this YouTube, I have to do this recitation. No, I listen to this YouTube, then the shaykh says, this is a person is wasting his time, is wasting the shaykh's time and they begin to lose the nazar of the shaykh. All they need to know is that you're stepping, you're breathing, you're practicing, you're entering into your fana, they don't need to hear from anything else. I want to do that, I want to recite this, I'm going to do like this, I'm going to watch this. You're, you're a distracted individual and now you're just jumping from line to line, you're not coming into the center. And that's what the shaitan wants is to distract people so that they're not progressing. And Allah asked in Qur'an, have you seen those who made the ascension? that they came 
means they're coming into the center for realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Is it possible that the muraqaba changes how we feel energy in our body? I feel it's become much more lighter and subtle. I just gave you the whole talk check, you're asking questions after I give you answers. <clears throat> it said that if you lose your mass, of course you're going to have a different uh, feeling of energy. If I send an energy, if somebody sends an energy and you're, you're a very mass person, you just came in, you're full of dunya, you're not going to feel anything. But what happens if you lose your mass on the equation E equals mc squared? If the mass is, is brought down, the E equals two lights, nur and nar. Nur is a reflective light, nar is the burning flame of the Divinely Presence. The one whom losing their mass is of course going to continuously feel energies. So they become latif and that's why we call lataif. The lataif are the subtle energies and energy points on the body, subtle because you have to be latif. If you're not latif you don't feel what energy came, what energy went, you say, like, I don't feel anything. That's not a good state, that means your heart not alive. When your heart is alive and your mass drop down, you feel everything. You feel anything trying to come around you, you feel the bad energy, very pronounced and you feel the beatific energies. But on this dunya there's more negative than good. So they feel the overwhelming breeze of negativity everywhere. Like, like uh, walking through a storm of locusts, they're just hitting you from every direction because it's just the black clouds of, of difficulty and bad energy everywhere. So definitely if you lose your mass you're, you're going to feel the energies and all these realities. But it's good these people have these questions but because of their questions the answers are already coming because I presume they had their question before we talk, start the talk. So it means that in their heart they put out what they want to know and that's why these talks are now covering these subjects of what people want to know about energy, their condition and, and how to reach towards these realities inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Shaykh as a student in Al-Azhar University Wallahi 60 seconds of Shaykh Nurjan's knowledge is equal to two years of studying at Al-Azhar We love you Sayyidi Thank you wa alaykum wa rahmatullah bless you pray for us inshaAllah <laughs> As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, dear Sayyidi. Wa Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Is there a way to completely ignore shaq, bad desires, and bad behavior? Yes, yeah, we talked about that in your waswas and in your energy. So, let's the graphic example, let's say shaitan or you know a, a bad or malicious energy like a bad jinn. The only reason he can come near me is, is why? Because his energy is not affected by me. So what does that tell you? Is that my energy is in a state that this bad energy has the ability to come right next to me and talk all he wants. Well that's not a good sign. So then it tells me that I should be like a fighter. I have to now build my energy, I have to do my salawats, I have to do my awrad and not just do the awrad but throughout the day I have to go to thousand, two thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand salawat. You have so much zikr to do, you really have you know no time. Throughout your day you have to be making salawats, have to keep praising, have 
keep making istighfar. You meditate, you have to meditate so that you feel the presence of the shaykh because your energy is not sufficient. These devils come too close to you. We said before you reach a state when your energy vibration is so high that if they try to come into your field your buzz and your alarm goes off because you're emanating with very high frequency energy. Your alarm system is an energy frequency. Anything entering into that frequency they're picking up an extreme buzz. So there are devils that try to come towards them whether they're awake or asleep and the entire vibration of their being an alarm will be set because that's not a vibration that's supposed to be in their field of energy. But until you get to that point it requires continuous practice and that becomes ayatul kareem qul ja'al haqq wa zahaq al That say, oh when the truth comes the falsehood perishes. So this is all about light an energy. If you're emanating with these energies, with this zikr uh, and the, the heart is beating with the zikr of Allah means your entire soul is vibrating at such a frequency that it makes a field of energy. So something very dirty and bad trying to come, you're immediately going to feel it. And something bad, bad intention immediately sends off an alarm and then there they are they're very aware something is trying to, to come close to them. So that, that's all based on energy and the logical answer is energy. That's why the energy subjects are so easy to understand. And you make wudu for what? For sealing your energy. You make salatul wudu for sealing your energy. You do your wazifas, your salah and all your namaz, you do your internal zikr to kill the shaitan inside of you. When you've done and fortified all of these energies, your madad and your meditation builds your frequency so that you become like that light that kills flies. You know in summertime when there's too many flies they put these electric lights, it makes a loud noise too, you can hear the frequency. And when the mosquito comes too close it goes, it, it fried it. Same thing, the shaitans and this jinn when they come too close to that energy they're getting fried. Very few will progress to come in unless they're on a mission. At that time then the madad of the shaykhs and all that support them, they come in and find out what's going on. <coughs> so this is the whole system. So madad is also for building yourself but madad is also your security force. So with all the madad and, and your life living a way of madad and, and humility that, Ya Rabbi that inda anta subhanika ni kuntum min ad-dhalimeen that, that glory be to you and I'm oppressor to myself. And Allah is the one who grants somebody a najat that you, you're, you're living a humble life, we will protect you. So then they do their good and that which is out of their control trying to attack because they live by their madad, Allah sends a support to make sure that they're safe and they're protected inshaAllah. So that's hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel. So faith and trust in Allah is an action in which we have to do steps that show that we have our faith and trust in Allah And for those whom completely put their faith and trust in Allah with this formula of muhabbat and ishq and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and those whom represent the ulul am. When that formula is complete they truly have faith and trust in Allah and Allah is the greatest of those whom defend. So imagine Allah is defending there's nothing to fear or to grieve. Allah is the one with all His izzah and might, Rabbul izzah is, is defending them and protecting them. But if there's a deficiency in that relationship which is going to be the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and that you must be accompanying the ulul amr. If you're not accompanying ulul amr there's a, a something wrong in that contract. So when they have all of that then they feel the, the, the nearness and that safety of Allah inshaAllah. 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam rahmatullah. Can the dua Ayatul Kursi help combat one's nafs and waswas and can it be recited often? <clears throat> yeah, the, you can recite dua Ayatul Kursi for protection once a day. Again, you don't you can't circumvent making your connection. So if, if that's a question in, in which to avoid meditating, connecting and everything we talked about for 40 minutes, no. Because without the connection you make too many du'as, too many zikrs and you go crazy. So brings up a different energy and a different reality. So this is not about and, that, and the, the just of the subject, you know, it points out something that if you believe that you can do this and you're going to fix this with all rods, then you're really relying upon yourself and very proud of the self. But if we didn't understand the, the whole discussion is it's not about because some people are very particular, well I need this wazifa, I need this exact awrad, how do I do it exist? That's telling the doctor that, do you really think you're lifting yourself up? That if you miss one, one of the words and you miss this and you miss that, you, you're not able to like become like shazam and now push everything away? It wasn't about you. You were supposed to say, I'm nothing, I'm a zalim and I have now vanished. And for Allah's najat and salvation to come you have to be nothing. When you're nothing it's the madad that is important, it's the presence of the shaykh coming and making these, these uh, energies to dress upon you. When that is solid and when that's strong then you recite what they ask you to recite and that energy is then dressing the servant. But if, if they think, oh I have problems I'm going to recite this now a thousand times, I'm going to recite that a thousand times, if that's in place of making your connection and acknowledging I'm nothing then that's not going to do much. Because what's coming to you is like a test, Allah keeps sending it. And the person keeps thinking they're going to make themselves stronger and they're going to recite and go. But this wasn't about making yourself stronger in this sense, it was about becoming humble that I'm nothing. And in my humbleness the madad is the strength that comes because it's Allah coming, the love of Prophet coming and then the love of Ulul Am dressing you. That is Atiullah, Atiya Rasulu, Ulul Amri Minkum. They came into the servant whom acknowledged their weakness and their nothingness. But if this was about each one trying to make themselves to be stronger, tougher, do more, then where did the madad come? And where does it come into that formula? And it doesn't and it makes people to be proud of what they do and the actions and the amma that they do. And that's why you get so many people emailing, I'm doing this wazifa, I'm reciting this Qur'an, I'm reciting this, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But you do whatever you want but the, the guidance was you were supposed to do your madad, you were supposed to do your connection and with that connection you can build upon everything inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa What can we do for our parents that want to be cremated? Please forgive me. <coughs> What can you do for parents that want to be cremated? With parents it's difficult because you, you, you can't say much to parents because you have to keep the respect of what people want to do. If you ever do get the opportunity and you know having a, a discussion about you know when you, when you sleep and you have dreams and, and if imagine somebody puts a lighter under your foot when you're sleeping do you think you feel it? And the person says, yeah of course I'd feel it because I'm sleeping. Yeah, I said, well in my belief and what I understand death is like a great sleep in which we're transitioning into a different reality. So what if you're going to feel that? And there's a chance I'm right and maybe chance I'm wrong but if my chance of being right is right, do you really want to feel the, the, the pain of burn and for what? And usually you know maybe it's for financial reasons, this person doesn't want to pay for their grave and doesn't want to, to 
to they come up with excuses burden people but you know you can search everywhere for something affordable there's insurance programs that people can put or you know, many different ways to try to resolve that for somebody in which to get a grave for them as a gift and say I got a grave for you and and the, 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 I'm going to bury you here I don't think you should you know put play with fire and you shouldn't have to try to feel pain and burning and and want to vanish from this world you have to have a place in which I can visit you and draw near to you pray for you and remember you some people have had a, a difficult life and they feel that they should just vanish and burn their presence away from this earth so there's many different reasons but the the the, the putting in the grave and burning and that's why as a muslim it's important to prepare your grave ahead of time that you have to buy your grave ahead of time. That's why we're, we're doing this because of the difficulty that's coming and the overwhelming expense of, of burials going up and up and up and not going down. And I have a, a feeling that it may go even higher because of the abundance of, of people entering into the grave. So it's going to be harder to find anyone and before you know it they're going to offer, well you got to burn this person, God forbid. So and if you leave it and leave the burden to your children and they don't have that faith and they don't have the money then they'll say, well, yeah, well you know you go to this funeral place they say, well you know for a few thousand dollars we can put them and burn them and put them in a cup. So we don't want to leave the choice to other people on our departure, our, our departure is the most important element of our existence on this life. That we have to go quickly to the grave, we have to be washed and clean. We're about to, to meet, you know, the presence of Allah's Divinely Lights and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad. We wouldn't want to leave that to other people to choose. So, this is a part of planning, part of faith, and, and to, to get your place and go there and pray often that, Ya Rabbi, make it to be the abode of peace, make it to be the caravan of love. Make it to be filled with my the love of my awliya, love of Sayyidina Muhammad love of your Divinely Presence. So these are all important steps in faith and to, to convey that to some people that we love that would want to harm themselves then it's in Allah's hands and you keep praying to Allah to, to change their heart and change their mind and whatever is possible, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah This question is from TikTok, uh, does TikTok not present more harm than good? TikTok? All of them present immense harm, more harm than any good. We don't have uh, any personal accounts on any of these social medias. Nor should anyone have a, a personal account and out there enjoying these things, these are all demonic. We already have talks on all of this, these are all demonic uh, playgrounds. But we're there to teach people. So we're on all these social media platforms to teach people. Don't direct message anyone, don't do any communications with people, don't go onto social media with personal accounts. Make alias accounts, make SMC accounts, new Muhammad accounts, not your personal name and putting your personal picture and then direct messaging and talking and chatting with people and making every type of haram and every type of zina. This is not at all acceptable and, and very dangerous. So no, definitely over the years we have many talks on, on that subject. But if you think we're going to let shaitan be out there just have free reign, no, absolutely not. Wherever they are we're coming right in after them and sort of bombarding them with these missiles and these bombs of truth and, and bombs of light and love and ishq and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So that's you know for the benefit of, of teaching and da'wah so that these people don't burn themselves with every sort of badness. And that becomes the reality. So when people make these accounts it's very important to make a Nur Muhammad account. If you're on those platforms take the reels, take the short videos and start sharing them like crazy everywhere so that they can't take down our site. Because as soon as we start posting they start telling us, oh you know you, you don't meet our guidelines. And then I asked Ali, which, which guideline they're talking about? 
It was your video against smoking. What? I never heard that before. Our video against smoking, they came back and said, it doesn't meet our guidelines because we want to destroy everyone and you're trying to help people. Well, who, who can come and say that that doesn't meet your guidelines? So it means we know that they're clever, they're going to try to maybe put this down or take this down. But if a thousand people are putting out channels for Nuh Muhammad, well which one are they going to take down? That's, that's what, what's important, make it and send it out. Don't play with it yourself, don't play with fire, don't go in there and, and, and talking and chatting with people. You're going to lose your grace and, and proximity to Prophet So this is about a da'wah in the last days, same with the YouTube channels, same thing with the Instagram channels. All of these are for da'wah and sending out information and knowledges and reality because you have to be where the people are. So if you say, I'm only going to sit here but everybody's over there, well you have a message that's going to deliver to who? So wherever they are we have to deliver that message and that reality. So like people in a busy area and there's someone standing on a soapbox and telling them the last day, last hour is upon us, the last hour <laughs> is upon us is exactly like that. These people are so engaged in, in, in craziness and uh, here comes these teachings that the last hour is upon us, the doom is coming, difficulty is coming, they don't want to hear that. Not even the makers of that software they don't want, they say, you don't meet our guidelines because we told people not to smoke. <laughs> so you can see how, how, how crazy the, this, this social media is, how dangerous these platforms are inshaAllah. Allah protect us all inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum uh, Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sayyidi, I'm concerned that nowadays one in 54 children is in autistic spectrum disorder and ADHD yeah. is common among kids, some related to vaccines and some others to the bad quality of food and lifestyle. Does it have to do with jinn world? Uh, uh, what is happening to the children in the world? Something is damaging the neurodevelopment of our kids. Could you please give us an explanation on how to protect our kids? Allah bless you. Yeah, inshaAllah, this is, these are the, the signs of the last days and the effect of energy, the effect of uh, food, like everything you said, that that's uh, everything. The vaccinations and what they're putting within these different uh, medicines and, and how it affects uh, the heavy metals that they put within them and how it affects the body of the, chi the child, the mental development, the energy developments, all of these. And that's why it's so important that for, for families uh, that Allah guides them to the tariqahs, that they wear the taweez, they put the taweez upon the children, that when having a child and, and what they eat and what they drink and to make du'a upon everything. And w what else can one do is if they did everything they could to, to be good with Allah and to be spiritually protected uh, by what Allah has given as a ni'mat, then the rest is in Allah's hands. So we're in a, in a difficult time, difficult area and everyone's trying their best to, to survive through these difficulties. And uh, what, what the believer can do is, is try their best and whatever is in Allah's hands is in Allah's hands. But definitely for those whom are not paying attention and, and uh, they're, they're under extreme difficulty because they don't pay attention to what's happening and what the children are doing, what type of energies will affect the children, what type of, of difficulties are, are in the food and in the drink and in the water and in their toothpaste and you know they put fluoride in Western countries in water and in toothpaste and that's formaldehyde and that has uh, horrific effects upon the body and upon the mental development of children. So th those things are dangerous, those are deadly but you know if, if people come to an awareness and, and use more homeopathic remedies and have uh, more spiritual understandings then, then people can at least traverse the difficulty of dunya inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon 
Wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Shifat ya Rasul Kareem, Ameen. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.